Your next pill may be manufactured in space. This is the promise of a new kind of company, Varda Space Industries. In this video, let's dive into their business model, the science that makes it all possible, and where they're at in their development cycle. And if you stick around until the end, you will also learn where the name Varda comes from and why I'm personally obsessed about it. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Pavel, and on this channel, I talk about science in the skies and the impact it can have here on Earth. When I first heard about Varda just a few months ago, I was truly blown away by their mission and what they've been able to achieve thus far. So Varda Space was founded in late 2020 by Founders Fund principal Dalian Asparov and former SpaceX Cargo Dragon engineer Will Bruy. And they want to build the first space factory. Specifically, they want to use microgravity to manufacture high-value products with unique properties that will be useful here on Earth and then bring them back to the surface. These could be superconductors, fiber optic cables, and even pharmaceuticals. But how? Let's look at that closely. Varda isn't trying to develop this industry from scratch. That's no longer necessary. In fact, space economy has been growing for decades and is now experiencing a period of rapid growth. I recently read the book called Space Economy, written by Chad Anderson, that talks about that in much more detail. And I actually reviewed it in one of my previous videos, so check it out. There are several key factors that will determine success of Varda's vision. First is cost-effective launches. These are made possible by rockets like SpaceX Falcon 9 or Rocket Lab's Electron. Second is robust hardware for in-space manufacturing and sample return that Varda is developing right now. And third is focus on manufacturing of high-value materials with very unique properties that can only be obtained in the absence of gravity. Putting the first factor aside, which is a video in and of itself, what I'd like to focus on is second and third ones for the remainder of this video, because to me, as a biotech sales professional and not a rocket scientist, these present the most interest. To do that, let's fast forward to today. Since Varda's founding in early 21, they have worked very hard towards their first launch. And in fact, earlier this year, on June 12, 2023, they have finally launched their first payload on board SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as part of Transporter 8 mission. This was a module that has made it with a photon spacecraft, manufactured by Rocket Lab. Together, this combined payload is capable of staying in orbit, transmitting data, and manufacturing materials without any human intervention. This has a massive benefit because Varda doesn't need to rely on astronauts on board International Space Station. And at the end of its mission, the capsule is going to return to Earth and, with the help of its heat shield, prevent its nearly 200-pound capsule from disintegration upon re-entry. By focusing their efforts on designing and building the manufacturing and re-entry capsule, Varda can focus on faster execution of its technical milestones. And this means it doesn't really need to worry about how to launch or maneuver in orbit, because that infrastructure is already provided by well-established players of the space economy, like SpaceX and Rocket Lab. These strategic partnerships are indeed key to accelerating their path towards profits. Now, let's talk about what's happening inside this space factory. On board, they have a drug called Ritonavir, commonly used to treat an HIV infection. But what Varda plans to do with it in space is actually mind-blowing. To explain that, let's start with a quick science lesson. When you try and grow crystals on Earth, not, not these kinds of crystals. They can only grow to a certain size and purity. In many ways, that's due to gravity. However, once you remove it from equation, both size and crystal quality can be significantly improved. That's been well proven over decades of crystallization experiments in lower Earth orbit. But back to ritonavir. This HIV drug can exist in multiple polymorphs, or simply unique crystal shapes, with each one having its own pharmacological properties. And if you don't control this process, you get this mixture of polymorphs that may not be as pharmacologically potent as compared to the one with the most oomph. However, by removing microgravity from equation, you have additional control over this complex crystallization process and can potentially direct formation of only the most potent polymorph. And for all science nerds out there, I linked an article in the description that talks about that in much more detail, which was co-authored by scientists at Varda. So, if you can form uniform crystals of a given drug molecule in microgravity, you can improve its pharmacological properties. And let's be honest, this can command a certain price premium if your space drug is suddenly much better at treating certain disease 
or has way less side effects. As you can see, Varda Space is on its way to proving that in-space manufacturing of high-value materials is both commercially viable and scientifically achievable. So where they are now? As of this video, Varda's capsule is still orbiting the Earth. It has already concluded its 27-hour run over Tonavir's manufacturing and is currently waiting for approval for re-entry license from FAA. It's actually harder than you think, and Varda is working on accelerated pathway to get that sorted out. So, but once done, it will perform re-entry and land in Utah using its parachutes. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that happen in the very near future. So if you're still watching, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I wanted to mention why I'm obsessed with Varda and specifically address the name of the company. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and as you may or may not know, Varda is actually the name of the goddess of stars in Middle-earth lore, which I find just awesome. And professionally speaking, this kind of a perfect storm of a company that bridges biotech and space is something I'm very excited and passionate about, and I can't hear to hear about their next launch, next landing, and many other accomplishments. This video wouldn't be possible without some great resources that I found online to make this video, which I will link below, including an in-depth article from Not Boring Company on Substack. And if you found this video interesting, hit the like button and share it with other people, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you and I will see you all in the next video.